Hello guys, hope you all are doing well. Today we will learn about Tehmeena Dorani's book My Shooter Love. Tehmeena Dorani, a Pakistani English authoress who was raised in the privileged milieu of Lahore High Society, details her traumatic with her second partner, Gulam Mustafa Khan, in her autobiography. This book is about the authoress who was born into an affluent, well-off Pakistani family. Subjected to the repression of the same culture since early life, she was expected to marry a wealthy Muslim from a noble family, bear him many children, and live a luxurious lifestyle of air conditions, solitude. Status: Tamina divorced her first husband, Anis Khan, in order to marry Mustafa, and we are seeing a fantasy world that quickly turned into a nightmare. She continued to move in the best channels after marrying Mustafa Khan and she learned to maintain the image and reputation of a fashionable, well-educated wife and mother of four children. Mustafa Khan, an influential and trustworthy politician in the Zulfikar Bhutto government who later became Punjab's chief minister, was not an ecumenic by birth. Rather, he was developed by society's patriarchal attitude against women. Mustafa Khan grew aggressively manipulative and sociopath, insecure of his wife, eventually alienating her from the rest of the world. She suffered alone and in isolation for 14 years of her marriage. She illustrates how she used words to educate us of her misery and agony as well as to awaken the sleeping lioness inside her. Tamina's further emphasis the patriarchal society which views sex as an instrument of supremacy instinct of just a form of reciprocal gratification and pleasure. Throughout the narrative, the writer attempts to portray the mystery of a woman who is stuck in a patriarchal and partial society regardless of her wealth. Women are often seen to be subjected to social constraint that resulted in setbacks. And Tamina paid a hefty price for her rebellion as a Muslim woman pursuing a divorce. She was signed away from all matrimonial support, lost custody of her four children and became estranged from her friends and shunned by her family. She felt compelled to share her story following her divorce. When Pakistani publishers refused to print her manuscript because of this controversial character, she self-published it. The book was a shocking revelation that stunned Pakistani society to its heart. She at last was someone who has managed to reconcile her Islamic faith with her strong belief in women's rights. In this patriarchal society and prejudged culture, every woman she emphasizes must endure before she discovers her hidden loyalness. Their book is divided into three parts. We will look into each part summary one by one. The book My Feudal Lord is basically divided into three sections dubbed Loyan of Punjab, Loyan of Jungle and Loyaness respectively. This shows Tamina's transformation from an everyday aristocratic housewife to a liberated human fighting for equal justice and women's liberation can be traced across these segments. Part 1. Loyan of Punjab she reveals the dark side of Mustafa in this section as she bears the brutality of being Mustafa's wife. She jots down all of the times Mustafa has humiliated her womanhood. He smacked her both verbally and psychologically. There are numerous moments in the plot that demonstrate that gender discrimination in society and familial bonds are the roots of women's oppression. According to Temina, the women in their circle did not appear to look beyond their high noses. They talked about disobedient servant, apparel jewels and interior decorating over hours. Temina was no exception to this now and she 
meticulously fashioned herself to suit her husband's expectation whether it was in terms of her looks attire or cosmetics furthermore she delighted in the traditional societal norms of a married woman's conduct although mustafa raped tamina in a hostile manner culminating in her pregnancy he also tortured his ex-wife sherzade and consequently cheated her with tamina thus bounding her for life A close reading of the novel confirms that Mustafa's concern for his pregnant wife stemmed from his desire for a male heir and not for affection for towards her. Her ability to endure Mustafa's torture is due to an entrenched patriarchal value that instills a sense of dependence in the essence of womanhood. This includes the husband's physical dominance over the woman. Mustafa bore his manly ego in abusing the socially weak woman. Tamina accepted this oppression as her destiny as due to her childhood where she saw her mother doing the same and treating her as the different child due to the color and all the oppressions she has learned. She kept a image of a perfect marriage as where the husband must be dominating. which made him attracted towards Mustafa Khan and made her cheat on his first childhood love Anis Khan who was actually a noble person moving towards the next part which is the law of jungle part 2 of the novel is set in the politically contentious aftermath of general Zia scoop which overthrew prime minister Zulfikar Ali Bhutto's government and established a military regime Mustafa a Bhutto supporter has fallen out of favor with the new administration following his immigration to London via Makkah where he had an affair with Dorani's younger sister Adila Mustafa promised General Zia's government that he will return from London with some valuable documents that will facilitate in the utter liquidation of Bhutto's government and thereby demonstrate Mustafa's adherence to Pakistan's current military regime however Mustafa's ambiguity is overcome after he arrives in London and he agrees to remain committed to Bhutto government Tamina makes some shocking allegation about Khars links to India's raw in a plan to to assassinate Zia since no one is with her not even her family Tamina must withstand Mustafa's physical threat and attacks as a part of her existence even her father warns her that she can leave that house only in a coffin and not as a divorce as earlier even now most of the uh, time that divorce in pakistani society was considered as a taboo on the face of women Tamina on the other hand blames her sister for the affair and claims to her mother that her sister has been seducing Mustafa Tamina's one-sided complaint stems from her need to defend her husband's honor in her parents' home. Mustafa, however, batters her with the butt of his double-barreled shotgun and strips her naked as a result. Tamina's story is knocked off the stereotype radical religious facade of Pakistani high society, exposing the scumsy underbelly of the country's clandestine privileged notions. moving towards the last part of the book which is loyness mustafa khan demonstrate oneself to be a man with many mood swings he has so brainwashed her into fantasizing for a perfect future and seeing him as a champion of democracy that she fights tirelessly and successfully for his release he blamed tamina for coming to see him without a dupatta while in imprisonment for plotting to kill zia Tamina conducts monthly visits to Mustafa who is imprisoned and continues to rally social solidarity for him. He has no choice but to be with her. So, he keeps his cool. His perversions eventually win out and his lust for her resurfaces leading him to rape her in the prison on his birthday. Tamina is also healing from surgery and is physically ravaged by the wounds he inflicts. He rapes her while her breast surgery stitches are still current.
This is the final edge because she seeks the Islamic khula or divorce which is granted to women who voluntarily give up all title to property. Mustafa fights tooth and nail to keep their union together because she is his only hope of getting out of jail. When Mustafa is released from prison, he reveals his true self. He is again the same arrogant, greedy, egoistic and possessive man who was imprisoned. He is envious of Tamina's national image and support and he refuses to accept any of her sacrifices in his release from prison and on the domestic front he refu- resumes his forbidden relationship with his sister-in-law Adila. Tamina on the other hand is no longer docile, obedient, submissive or receptive. She decides to terminate her relationship and bring an end to her life's suffering. In this patriarchal and prejudiced culture, every woman she emphasizes must endure before she divorces her hidden loyalness. Tamina paid a hefty price for her rebellion. As a Muslim woman pursuing a divorce, she was signed away from all matrimonial support, lost custody of her four children and became estranged from her friends and shunned by her family. She felt compelled to share her story following her divorce. When Pakistani publishers refused to print her manuscript because of this controversial character, she self-published it. The book was a shocking revelation that stunned Pakistani society to its heart. She, at last, was someone who had managed to reconcile her Islamic faith with a strong belief in women's rights. Tamina Dorani's autobiography, My Feudal Lot, may be the most major impetus of her autonomy since it shattered the common silence of Muslim women in general. This is her social message of women who are marginalized. She went on to campaign for women's rights later on. As Mustafa told her that she has no name or significance of her own, that she is just Tamina Gulam Mustafa Khar's ex-wife. She felt vulnerable because his comments had stunned her deeply and she had no good response for him at the stage. Well, Mustafa, now the world will soon know you as Tamina Dorani's ex-husband. She responded to her previous comment with absolute bravery and confidence. When the newspaper revealed the pending international publication of her autobiography, My Feudal Lord, she had completely liberated herself and established her new independent lib- identity as Temina Dorani with these few expressions. In this, Temina Dorani has articulated many of the oppressions she has faced since childhood as well as the motives behind others' perceptions of her as inferior or submissive. Her mother didn't adore her because she had a dark skin. Tahmina was worried about her mother's process of keeping her due course and she was scared of losing anything which her mother would not tolerate. Moreover, the crippled environment at home and the obligation of remaining obedient child without having any enjoyment or space made her somewhat sick and fearsome. By divorcing Mustafa, Tahmina was able to develop her own identity and be regarded as a unique human being. She began interacting with people after she was liberated from oppressive regime. Or, in other words, she was learning to be social, a passive observer. She loved social events and parties and was influenced by other strong female character. When she was married to Mustafa Khar, she missed all of this throughout her life. She also stepped away from politics and began painting as a way of describing her insights of the world. Her work now depicted the graphic description of women being exploited in the targets. This book mainly targets about the oppression and prejudice against the women at court and how feudal rulers, according to Tamina, believe that it is their right to subjugate women and girls, whether they be their mother, sister, housemaid, or even their daughters. She believes feudalism offers men like Mustafa Khar, the strength and legitimacy to be cruel to the so-called lesser sex in its own crafted rules. 
Tamina has this to say about feudalism was the license to rape, plunder and murder. Despite Mustafa's claims that he is anti-feudalism, his traits of feudal lord and relationship with Tamina Dorani, his sixth wife, depicts the same. He also had an extramarital affair and oppressed her and harassed his former wives, Wazir, Firdos, Safia, Nobar, and Sherry. Hope you guys understood the summary of the book, My Feudal Lord. If you guys have any doubt, you can contact me on the mail ID. Thank you. We will meet in the next video.